coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual. AT&T. And by Buick. Welcome to Dayton, Ohio, for the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. Our second game tonight is a pair of at large 13 seats out of the West region in the bracketing this year, the LaSalle Explorers versus the Boise State Broncos. The last two at larges in the field. Hello, friends, Jim Nance with Lord Kellogg, and the winner of this game moves on tonight after the game to Kansas City. Uh, what about this matchup? What are you expecting here tonight, Clark? Guard heavy. Okay. Both ways. Dremick and Marks for Boise State. Outstanding scores. Get about 33 points a game. And then for LaSalle, multiple attackers off the dribble. Tyreek Durant, Ramon Galloway, Tyrone Garland, all of these guys. Sam Mills can get to the basket. I expect to see a lot of isolation, penetration, pitch, good high-octane action both ways. All right, looking forward to it. Let's meet LaSalle first. The Explorers and head coach John Giannini taking LaSalle back to the tournament for the first time since 1992. There is Galloway. Along with Duran, Mills, Peterson, and Wright, his first five. And the Boise State Broncos and their first five. Loriaga, he can shoot it. Yes, sir. Hatzio Marovic, another Australian. Nicely done, Jim. Drimmick, who certainly can fill it up. Marks and Watkins also starting. And there is Dr. John Janini in his ninth year at LaSalle. Came to LaSalle from the University of Maine, where he was Maine's all-time winningest coach. And then Leon Rice in his third season after 11 years as an assistant at Gonzaga and big things are happening out in Boise as well. Not only in football, but basketball as well. So game two is underway. And Boise State. I have the first possession. Dr. Leon Rice after shoot around this afternoon, Jim, talked about not being afraid to run, but wanted to make sure they made LaSalle guard in the half court. And there's Grimmick long on the initial shot. Yeah, he loves that shot, but it doesn't get the first one to go. Meanwhile, the Explorers run down to the other end. Here's Galloway. Gives him 17 points a game. Duran gives him 15 off the bench. Garland gives them about 13, so guard heavy scoring for the Explorers. At this end of the floor, Boise State wants to kind of pack it in. Everybody has to be conscious of the dribbler and be ready to help. Three on the shot clock. Duran just in time. First and 10 to the game. And it beats the 35 second clock for a deuce. Sal, one of the nation's best, Jim, at forcing turnovers. 21st in the country in turnover margin, so they'll get up into you. One of the things you like about Boise State is this team has good ball handlers and faces the floor nicely. Good pass that time. And Watkins spun himself right out of a layup. Uh, got called for traveling. Yeah, not aware of where he was. He had a layup on the catch. Beautiful pass by Marks. He goes up with the left hand, and he's spinning right into trouble and to a turnover. You have to be aware of where you are, especially in the paint. He shuffled the feet and got whistled for it. And the Explorers out of that tough Atlantic 10 conference. One of the best in the country, Jim. Five teams in the field. And that's very nearly, nearly traveling. Duran with the three and swiped away by Marks. Here's Marks. Left hand, no. And Mills able to snag it. Mills 
steps in. Undecided on that shot attempt. And as a result, left it short. But you can see both of these teams will attack off the dribble. Pretty good ball handling teams as well. Now look at the spacing here by Boise State. Drive it, drive it in, and too strong with the shot off the glass. Boise still looking for a first basket. In the paint, beautiful pass, and denied. What a block. Derek Marks, known for his offense, that time showing some defensive prowess. And denying right at the other end. It's Watkins right. over right. Ryan Watkins, the junior from Canyon Country, California. Here's Galloway, whipping it to the corner to Mills, and that's three off the rim. High quality look, though. LaSalle will take on average 21 threes a game, and they make about eight of them, Jim. Excellent three-point shooting team at 37%, and that's exactly how they get them. Penetration and pitch. Watkins, that time able to grab it, put it up quickly for two more. Risk pace here. Both teams will be looking for the under 16 media timeout. No whistles. Not. I like it that way. Though. Mills, top of the key, and he drains a three. three point basket, Sam, Sam Mills. Mills out of Sunrise, Florida, just outside of Fort Lauderdale. And he gives LaSalle the 5 4 lead. Ovarovich weaving through traffic finds Watkins underneath for two more and Watkins has all six of the Broncos points and close to his eight-point average already Jim that's where the style is vulnerable they want to try to turn you over on the perimeter but if you take care of it you can hurt the small Explorers team at the basket and how about Mills at the other end with another three six for Mills 35% three-point shooter on the season. Off to a nice start here in the first five minutes. Watkins out high. Very nearly stolen away. Loriaga able to give it up over to Hansi Amerovic. Nice job by Peterson to get back into the play for this half. Drimmick from the corner. He's had two good looks. And that's off the fingertips of Watkins. And finally, we have a break. Non-stop action for five minutes and 12 seconds. And LaSalle has the 8-6 lead in the first break. You're watching the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. To Dayton, LaSalle up 8-6. When you think of Boise State, you think of blue turf and football. Well, head coach Leon Ray said that's exactly why he wanted to come here. The success of football has allowed him to go into any home and get recruits. They all know Boise State. He also said he has been a fan of the Broncos since his days at Gonzaga because of the proximity of the two schools. And now Rice is bringing success to the basketball team, guys. Boy, is he ever work, yep. Sorry, Jim. Yeah, he saw a lot of uh, tremendous upside based off of the huge accomplishments by the Broncos. Snapped inside by Galloway, and the basket is made by Garland. Garland, he comes in, gives him 13 a game. He warned us. The play made by Galloway, though, on the penetration and the late find. Talk to John Giannini and his style of play is one where he wants as many ball handlers and playmakers on the floor as possible. He just thinks you have more ways to hurt teams if that's the case. You cannot leave a Loriago, the junior from Portland, now with his 83rd three of the year. And he's made in his career, 80% of his made field goals are threes. Yep. And whenever you do that, I call you an Allen wrench. You've got one specific purpose, and that's to make threes for this, in this case. There's Galloway along with his attempt. That with it is Drimmick. 
Moriaga feeds it inside, is tapped out. LaSalle. Too much time and space for a Loriaga here. Mix up defensively, bumped off by the screen, and that's way too much time and space for Jeff Loriaga, the former high school football quarterback. Yeah, at Jesuit High School in Portland, Oregon, where he also was a basketball teammate of Kyle Wiltshire. Now with Kentucky, stolen away by Garland. Two on one. And pass over. Not exactly handled cleanly. Three-point shot, good. That's Peterson. D.J. Peterson, sophomore from Burnsville, Minnesota. Doesn't give him a lot of point production, but he can shoot the three. Made five in one game this year against George Washington. And 41% from behind the arc on the year, Jim. So you don't look into those kind of numbers. Thompson in the lineup. Pass gets away, save. And the jumper good by Marks. That was a Loriaga who saved it, flipped it over to Marks for two. Good shooting both ways. You've got multiple ball handlers and playmakers out there who can play this kind of clean, effective, free-flowing game. Peterson, back out high with it. Garland, regains control, leads the corner. Three-pointer, yes, by Mills. He's made three in the game already. And that's Kremick that's down, Jim. May have tweaked an ankle, but you're right. Nine points on three triples by Sam Mills as you look at Anthony Dremick there. Hey, let's go. Broken play here. The ball kept alive. Looks like he may have stepped on the ball, or then he fell down underneath. Had his ankle underneath him when he fell down. Actually holding his knee a little yeah. bit now, so. He is. He's rubbing his right knee. And that is off the fingertips of Thompson. So a Bronco turnover. LaSalle has made four threes already, three of them by Sam Mills. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, Tracy Wolfson here in Dayton. Celebrating 75 years of March Madness by voting for your all-time players, teams, and moments of the NCAA tournament. Vote now at NCAA.com slash March Madness. Here is how, how the Broncos made their way to the tournament. Sixth time overall. First time, though, ever as an at-large. Never won a tournament game. 0-5 to this point. But in the field for the first time since 2008 when the Broncos lost the first round game to Louisville. We saw Anthony Drummond rubbing that right knee, so he's out of the lineup for Boise State now. It doesn't look good. He spent that whole time out. Uh, really expressing to the medical crew and the staff there exactly what had happened and it looked to be in a lot of pain. Strong defense here by Boise State. They really want to try to keep the penetrating lanes clogged and unavailable for this LaSalle team. Garvin has to take it with two on the shot clock. Long rebound out to Mills. Galloway, who's a good passer, leads it inside. Peterson whips it back out. I like the way Galloway's playing here in the last outing in the Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. He pressed a bit offensively. Going inside, take. yeah, beautiful shot. You know, he settled for perimeter shots, some of the unquestionable, of the questionable variety, and I think he's learned from that. Obvious that he's playing a little more of a cerebral and settled game here today, here tonight, rather. Well, his last three games, he was over 11 from three. Inside, short with the shot. That was Kenny Buckner, but a foul against uh, LaSalle. Here's Galloway. Yeah, there's Ramon Galloway. Nice little shake-up and crossover dribble, and then the little floater off the glass. First. Ex excellent vision he has. Jim. When he's driving the ball, he's always aware of where the open teammate is. First foul on Mills. In fact, the first foul against LaSalle, and here is the only senior. The Boise State roster. Kenny Buckner will shoot one more. He'll be graduating in May. And Kenny, a very popular 
member of this team. His teammates love him. He missed the gathering for the selection show with his teammates. He had an infected wisdom tooth pulled. Missed practice on Monday. Been at shoot arounds the last couple of days. And now back at the line for one more. Gets that one to drop. So Buckner just out there for a brief while. And Ryan Watkins returns. He's already scored six. Had the first six for Boise State. It's a young Boise State team, primarily freshmen and sophomores, is Tyrone Carlin. Small in stature, but that's a big boy move right there. Again, isolation. Help is not aware of where the ball is, and Garland strong in the air. He'll have a chance to make it a three-point play. Talking about the number three all-time scorer in Philly public high school history, third all-time. There's a man named Chamberlain on that list that's one of the two above him. <laughs> Figured that would be the case. Remick headed to the scorer's table. Jim will check back in. Let's hope he's able to shake off that strange or bruised knee suffering. Marks working hard for it. Gets back outside and stepping up Thompson. Pulled down by Galloway. Whip down. How about that pass? That's Galloway again. Peterson. Peterson finishes it off. Well, I tell you, that's been about the third time he's whipped it into a teammate to deliver. The goods. Not much room, and he rifled it on the line. Galloway with the left hand push. Beautiful dime right there. LaSalle plus 10. Nine to one run by the Explorers, leading it by 10, and be the first to know the latest news on all your teams with Bleacher Report's Team Stream app. Stay one step ahead. Check out Team Stream on your iPhone, iPad, or Android device today. A proud history at LaSalle. Back in 1954 in Kansas City, LaSalle won the national championship. 92-76 over Bradley. Tom Gola named the tournament's most outstanding player. In fact, LaSalle won its first nine NCAA tournament games. They went on to the national title game the next year and lost in the finals of 55 to Bill Russell's USF, San Francisco Dons, in the championship game. But the old Tom Gola era at LaSalle, and I know that Mr. Gola's back home watching this game right now. We send our best. Yes, we do. One of the all-time greats. Hall of Famer. Yes, sir. And you talk about freedom of movement in the game of basketball. That old footage shows you what National coordinator of officials John Adams would love to see in today's game that kind of freedom of movement. By the way, that championship that they won in Kansas City Clark 59 years ago today. Oh. They marked the anniversary. And it's going the other way. Called on Watkins. Spirit is though he lowered the shoulder. Let's take a look. Catch. Nice job, and that's Ramon Galloway, beautifully done. Outside of the restricted area, Art took the chest hit and got possession for his team. But Ramon Galloway had some kind of game without really scoring a lot. Here's Durant. Over to Galloway. Long three, and he's finally got one. Watch out now. Four games and 12 consecutive misses before that one finds its way home. Watch out now. The guy who struggled, who's a capable three-point shooter, gets one to go. The floodgates could open. Makes it a 12 to one scratch. And Boise approaching four minutes without a basket. And Watkins ends that scratch. He is the only one producing at that end, it seems. Eight of their 14. Carlin somehow able to get it to the corner and get it back. Boy, he sees the floor, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Underneath, just as we say that, well, I'm not sure it was a, a bad idea. This looks like Rohan Brown wasn't quite on the same page. 
Let's go over to Tracy. Well, guys, you were talking about Ramon Galloway and his struggles the last two games. Well, Giannini said he has to keep reminding Galloway that he doesn't have to carry the team. He doesn't have to win the game. He said you don't have to do it alone. He says what he needs to do is just be himself because that is awfully good, and we're seeing that right now, guys. Exactly, Tracy. Playing well within himself, but is that Grimmick? Yes, it is. Grimmick. Back on the floor and on the board with a three. Well, let's see if Boise State can negate the half-court offensive execution of LaSalle. To do that, because they are a little overmatched in terms of overall speed and athleticism, they've got to anticipate, just as Marks did there, communicate and try to disrupt some of those passes from LaSalle. It's going to belong to LaSalle again when we come out of the break. You're watching the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. Well, the Ohio State fans are in the building a couple of days early. They'll be playing Iona here on Friday in second round action. 25-17, LaSalle in front at the moment. Only one turnover committed versus four by the Broncos. That's one of the differences, and you also see the three-point field goal made difference as well. LaSalle has knocked down five, and Sam Mills has three of those. You know the Buckeye Nation knows how to travel, especially when it's only about 70 miles, yeah. 75 miles away from Center City, Columbus. Coming off the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Impressive win on Sunday against Wisconsin in that game. The two and I and Steve Kerr had the pleasure of calling. Beat it down low. And that's going to be a traveling call against Jarrell Wright. Not only will Ohio State be here on Friday, but so too out of the Big Ten will be the Indiana Hoosiers. A lot of red in the building, Jim. Yep. So they call it Crimson in Bloomington, Scarlet in Columbus, but it's all part of the red family. All part of the Big Ten family. Yeah. Trimmick gets it over to Mark Wild Shot. Not Real close. Harlan taking off. Trimmick in the defensive stance was even rubbing that knee for a moment. Garland looking for help back outside. With seven minutes to go, first half. And an eight-point LaSalle lead. Galloway. And as last touch by Drimmick. Pretty good job, job defensively that time by the Broncos. Good communication, rotation, active hands. Short shot clock now for LaSalle. And a push-off call on Mills. Explorers foul number 10, that is his second. second. DJ Peterson checks in for Sam Mills. Peterson replaces him. Here's what they saw. There's Sam Mills right in the middle. Oh, the hip on the screen. Yeah, got the hip out the second there. part of that. Yeah. All the quick hands reaching in was Duran. Coming right back, committing the foul is Marks. Foul's on number two, Derek Marks, his first, team's third. So the South had no turnovers in the first 11 minutes, and now has turned it over the last three trips. Garland, that's a two, and it rattles home. That's not bad news. That's just really good offense to pull up jumpers. And that's what John Giannini likes about his guards. They're comfortable with the ball, can make shots and make plays. And that time, defensively, they forced a turnover on Derek Marks, who has struggled occasionally with turnovers as you look at Tyrone Garland against Drimmick, who was in pretty good position. You've got to respect the drive there. Garland still able to get it up and down. Garland with six off the bench. The man with the ball who really forced that last turnover by Boise State, Durant. Now Galloway. Garland again, so quick. 
Beautiful move to the basket. The spacing is really good, Jim. And these guys, all of the players from the South that are on the floor, other than Wright, pretty comfortable handling the ball and driving, shooting, or passing. That is going to be a foul call on Durant. There nearly was a travel. Garland coming right at you, folks, slicing between two defenders. And getting it all the way to the rim. He's got eight now. It didn't take him long to get him either. Meanwhile, at this end of the floor, Boise State's got to come up with some answers. Well, they're having a tough time trying to get any type of penetration. A tough defense delivers again. And the lob. It's Garland to Galloway. And it's a 14-point LaSalle lead. Timeout, Boise State. Timeout, Boise State. Right now, it's the athleticism of the Explorers. Garland to Galloway. G squared. And it's a 14-point cushion for the Explorers. True TV's number one hit show, the all-new season of Hardcore Pong. That's Tuesday at 9 on True TV. Well paused. You had a nice pregnant pause there, partner. I'm sure there's a comma there, but I wanted to pace myself. As Duran has it stripped away. Loriaga makes that play. Other end, Drimmick and one. What a play by Drimmick after Loriaga broke up a two-on-one opportunity for LaSalle. Could be an important play to turn things in favor of the Broncos. Nice play on the ball. Nothing wrong with the knee of Drimmick there. How about the pass from the old high school quarterback? Right on target, in stride. Loriaga all the way full court with a touchdown. And now Drimmick showing no signs of any issues with that knee that was hobbling him for a few minutes at the start of this game. And Boise State handled the quickness on the perimeter of the, the Explorers. That's a good look for Galloway. That's, That's going to be the key, Jim. Drimmick again, weaving through traffic and two more. John Giannini really upset with that easy opportunity for Drimmick. That's back-to-back -back layups now. Five quick points for the Broncos. Yeah, a good timeout by Leon Rice. After the salad run it up to 31 to 17 on the big alley oop play. Galway open to the corner and Durant no. Box out. Well done by Buckner. Drimmick. Takes it to the paint, goes back outside, and Loriaga had the shot he wanted. Sure did. Off the penetration by Drimmick. Right, looking for help. He's going to work here. Yeah, already oh, backs off the defender. Back and in on Drimmick. And Jarrell Wright, the sophomore from Philadelphia, from Dobbins Tech. That's what we call mouse in the house, time for cheese. And Wright went right to work with it. Too strong and a little bit too tall for Clement there. Thompson. That shot was partially blocked. Put back up and in by Buster. The boys are starting to find a little rhythm here offensively, Jim. Consecutive scores. But again, at this end, can they keep the South from getting quality shots? You saw it making made eight of its last nine, shooting 64%, and even better now as Garland again explodes to the basket for two more, and he's got 10 from off the bench. Drimmick wants to answer back, and he gets two plus a trip to the free throw line. An impressive move, and... Anthony Drimmick trying to keep his team close, Jim, all by himself. Garland breaking it down. Philly style. Off the dribble. To the rim. 
Mark it up. For AT&T at the half, Matt Weiner anchoring the studio with Seth Davis, Steve Smith, Rex Chapman from Atlanta all coming up on AT&T at the half. And there is another LaSalle legend. 1990 Naismith College Player of the Year, Lionel Simmons. I know there's another LaSalle legend who would love to be here tonight, but he's getting ready to do some, some work up in Auburn Hills. I bet that's right. And that would be this man, our colleague, the great Bill Raftery, who led LaSalle in scoring back in 1961, averaging 17.8 points in the per game. Still very involved with the program, too. Hosts the open practice at the start of the season and an annual golf tournament fundraiser for his school. A great alum and a great friend. No surprise there. Bill Raffer as he is to everyone so gracious. I know he's glued to this one right now. <laughs> as good as they come. The governor we call him, Bill Raffer. Proud of what his alma mater has shown here thus far. But Dremick putting together a little personal assault of his own for the Broncos, keeping him within striking distance. Stolen by Galloway. to Duran, a pie, no. Bodies tangled underneath and it'll go against Watkins. Rohan Brown doing a nice job just trying to get to that missed shot. That's on Aloriaga actually. Team foul number four, first one on Aloriaga. So Wright comes back in. As Brown goes to the bench, 2.07 to go first half. Significant segment here, Jim, for the Broncos to retain some confidence. They can get some stops and close the gap here. For LaSalle, they've controlled this pretty much with the ability to go one-on-one, -on -one, get to the basket, and knock down shots. They'd like to push this back to double digits before halftime. Got 17 on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Trying to get it inside the right. Avon Garland shakes off the contact. A foul first. Don't count the basket. The foul is called on Mikey Thompson. Yeah, Thompson got mixed up on a little cross screen there. Again, just a 15 foul. First on Thompson. And a new 35. For the Explorers. That pass is down by Peterson. Almost got away. And now gone. Peterson has made one. Not this time. And Watkins with a good box out. Spin away move by Marks. Sloppy with the ball around Duran, Galloway, or Garland. As we move inside of a minute of the first half, a half controlled by LaSalle. But Boise State can chip away, bent down by as many as 14. And there's a foul call on Galloway. Wow. That's his first. Team and, six. Yep, and I thought that Marks lost his balance more than he was fouled. Let's take another look at it. Oh, not a lot there. I thought that's a fortunate break for the Broncos. Pretty good D by Galloway. Down to Drimmick. Good job by Peterson to close out on the Loriaga there. Thompson steps up. Way long. But a foul call on Peterson. And this will bring up a one and one. Second on Peterson. Tell you what, Watkins has had a productive first half for the Broncos, Jim. He's been able to find space inside. And other than one turnover, I recall earlier, you see Derek Marks leaving. It's been a tough half for him. Although Marks has been missed the second half throughout this season, averaging. 11 points a game in the second half this year. He's had some incredible second halves, including 28 in the second half alone against Creighton. So one-on-one for Watkins. And it's Peterson. 
And LaSalle poised for the last shot of the half. You said they want to get it back to double digits by halftime. They'll have a chance to do just that. Yeah, you want to start working probably at about the six second mark here. Maybe around the five second. You give yourself a chance at an offensive rebound, but not too much time left for the opponent to go the length that they get it. Right on your mark at six. Duran, fade away. No. For Boise State. And we've reached halftime with LaSalle leading at 35 to 27. Its largest lead was at 31 17 with five minutes to go in the half. Boise State actually closes the half, scoring 10 of the last 14. Let's go over to Tracy Wolfson. Coach, you were shooting 65% at one time. It's down to 58, but still, how have you been able to get the quality looks? Yeah, we, we have good players. They're really sharing the ball. Uh, when, when they do get some penetration and draw some help, they're, they're making simple passes, and basketball's a simple game. If you have talented guys who can make plays and they draw help and share the ball, it, it's pretty hard to stop. Thanks a lot, Jim. All right, thank you, Tracy. Dr. John Janini, that's the end of the first half here in Dayton. Explorers by eight will send you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Welcome back to Dayton. LaSalle trying to win a tournament game for the first time since 1990 when it defeated Southern Mississippi in the first round. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, Tracy Wolfson back here courtside. Tyrone Garland, no surprise. Just instant offense off the bench, topping the Explorers with 10 points. But things change often for Boise State in the second half. Yeah, they've been a pretty good second half team, primarily because Derek Marks has been an explosive second half player. In the first half, it was Anthony Demrick, Grimmick, who actually fought off an injury to his knee earlier, earlier in the half and came up with eight of the last 10 points that the Broncos scored. Being able to get to the basket effectively, but it was Garland off the bench for the Explorers who really ignited LaSalle to a double-digit lead midway through the first half. His drives were terrific, and here he gives it to Galloway, who had seven points in that half. So plus eight for LaSalle as we get ready for the last 20 minutes. And let's take a look at the first half stats presented by Coke Zero. Both teams over 50% from the field in that game. LaSalle to take advantage of the points off turnovers. Exactly. There you see it. I circled the nine turnovers leading to 14 points. And that was a concern of Leon Rice's, the athleticism and speed of LaSalle disrupting the Boise State offense. And yet only down eight. And again, we've mentioned that Derek Marks has shown throughout the season that he is capable of going for big numbers in the second half. If that's to happen, he's got the slowest pace a little bit and be better with the ball against pretty good defensive pressure. Callaway, who had seven points, three assists in the first half. And that time, throws it right into the arms of Aloriaga. Yeah, something about Marks averages about four points per game in the first half and over 11 in the second half. I think, you know, I talked to him earlier today at the shoot-around, Jim, and he talked about how he enjoys more than anything passing the ball as Drimmick continues his one-man assault on the Explorers. That's 11 of the last 13 that Drimmick has scored now for Boise State. Boy, can he shoot. Yes, sir, and, and that was a quick release. And create a shot as well. That is right inside. Jarrell Wright. Jarrell Wright. He's been playing some great basketball of late. Came in with 50 rebounds over the last five games. Only a sophomore showed you good poise and patience there. Here's Marks. In and out gets a good look, though. But I started to mention about Derek Marks talking to him this afternoon. He says he enjoys more than anything setting up his teammates. And usually that's how he tries to approach the first half of the game. And then in the second half, he zeroes in and starts looking for his own a little more. Inside, LaSalle scores again with Wright. And Jim, if that starts happening with the way these guys on the perimeter can make plays off the dribble, if Wright starts to give them some presence inside, then it really becomes a dilemma for Boise State. 
but now you're hurting him inside with the post and then off the dribble. Drimmick but able to score again. And Drimmick now up to 16 on the game. Half the Broncos points. Galloway, another dish, and Wright has scored the last three times down the floor. You gotta be careful trying to press and trap this LaSalle team. I can understand why Boise State is looking to, to do that, but you open up the floor for playmakers, and it can be dangerous. Galloway, no look to Wright after getting through the first line of defense. Second foul on Galloway. Let's get a report from Tracy. Well, guys, I had a chance to speak with Boise State head coach Leon Rice, and he said exactly what you guys were saying about Derek Marks. He is a second-half guy, and he expects him to step it up here in the second half. He also said that his team as a whole is a second-half team. And then I asked him about Drimmick. He said he is definitely hobbling, but he's tough, and he'll play through it, and we have seen that so far, guys. All right, thanks, Tracy. Igor Hansi-Amerovich with one more. He visited Boise State. With Drimmick, they took their visit together and decided to come together. Sign after playing on the Australian under-19 national team and competing against each other in high school back in Australia. Oftentimes, your current players are your best recruiters, especially if there's a common bond between them. Galloway, with that unique shooting style, delivers his second three of the night. Well, he's really played a composed game for the most part. He's had I think just two turnovers, one in each half. But man, he's come out and just really been within himself. Drimmick took a steal and they have aggravated that right knee injury, Jim. Yeah, he's hobbled now. Yeah, you can see it all over his face. He's hurting. But he's calling for it, and he's set up for the shot. Too strong. Well, Seth Davis was talking about it in the studio with the guys. Offensively, guys tend to shake off injuries a little more. And here comes Drimmick again. Inside, Watkins got the second chance at the first one. Knocked out of his hands. And Ryan Watkins. Interesting, interesting strategy here to try to change things up. Boise State extending the defense. Get a turnover out of it. Yeah, right. It's called for it. There's a sophomore. Good job by Drimmick to sell that. I don't think there was as much contact as he made it appear. Not quite as violent as it looked, huh? No, I don't think <laughs> so. Here you see Leon Rice talking to Derek Marks. Trying to calm him down, get him to zero in, and slow the game down for himself a little bit. Inside, Aloriaga. Scores a rare two-point basket. It's as close as Boise State has been in a while, partner. Yeah, got it down within six. Did trail by 14 with five minutes to go in the first half. Closest they've been since 35-30. Wow. How about the half Jarrell Wright has had? Got to that right shoulder. He's a left-handed player and just muscled his way to the middle and was able to get the hoop and the five. You're watching the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. Here in Dayton, James Madison University advancing tonight with its first win since 1983. A pair of freshmen stepped up really big for them tonight. They sure did. Charles Cook, Andre Nation combined for, I had it written down, 29 points they had. Also knocked down 13, 12 boards, six assists, seven block shots. Watch live games on your computer, iPhone, iPad, or select Android phones with NCAA March Madness Live. Visit NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. So James Madison will be back here on Friday to take on Indiana. Meanwhile, the winner of this game will be flying out immediately after the game to Kansas City for an early Friday afternoon game against Kansas State. 
So Wright missing the free throw, trying to complete a three-point play. He's at 10 on the night, eight coming in the second half. And Marks continues to sit on yeah. that Boise State bench. You know, sometimes when a player is putting a little too much pressure on himself to try to make plays, it's good to back away and take a panoramic view of things. Shot wide. They've never reset the shot clock, even though the Drimmick pass actually hit the rim. So we had to take that shot rather quickly as Garland at the other end makes a three. 13 on the night. He's only missed one shot, Jim. He's obviously got some at the basket, but he's made a couple of jumpers, too. You've got to respect his ability to go by you, and that creates space for the jump shot. Thomas Bro play on the floor for Boise State, number 15. From the corner. Hansi Omerovich, no. Tapped out and contact. And the foul is going to be on Durant. This is what Rice was arguing about. Look at the pass. Actually hits the front of the rim, and there was no reset of the clock. Derek Marks for Boise State. But the rules do say it has to be an intentional shot. There you go. Just giving you a little opportunity to lay that out. That's exactly right. And there is Marks coming in and still trying to find a way to get something going. He's got two good looks this half. Mills, he made three in the first half. Four now on the night from behind the arc. Sam Mills. And now the Explorers have matched their largest lead of the night. Drimmick. Yeah, he's been the only offensive force, although Watkins had a few buckets early, but Drimmick is the only guy for Boise State. Leading Broncos score each of the last two seasons. Still just a sophomore. Here's Peterson. Picked up by Buckner. Trinick trying to fight him back into it. Drives. And they're going to say contact. I thought it might have been a tie up situation. Yeah, Duran got a lot of the ball, but the official felt that he got some arm as well. So just an aggressive play by Dremick. So for Duran, that's his third. And that'll send Drimmick to the line for a couple. Shooting two. 19 of the 41. And part of this Australian connection at Boise State. Of course, that's nothing that we didn't see last night for that fact, for that matter, last night. And there's the coach that's really helped bring the Broncos from Australia, John Reilly. Who played at Gonzaga to and took them to their NCAA tournament appearance back in 1995. But uh, Drimmick coming out of that Australian Institute of Sport as Matt Delapadova started here last night for St. Mary's. I'll just Same call thing. him. I'll just call him Mr. D. <laughs> Matthew D. He was orchestrating last night. Boy, is he preppy and clever and crafty. Makes excellent plays with the ball for his teammates or himself. By the way, that was batted out by Oloriaga. And now LaSalle. Seven and nine of this half from the field. They've really been patient, Jim. Have the explorers, and there's a drive and a tough shot. That's what Boise State has to try to do, force some tough shot misses and then rebound and try to get going offensively. But there's the quickness of Garland shooting the gap. Almost came up with the steal there. Right at you, folks. Thompson thinks his teammate is open. Not so fast. Tyrone Garland almost gets the steal. I thought he was going to land in our lap for a minute there. But another quick cut back onto the court. Can Marks get going? Well, Moriaga gets down and out. And Wright having a huge second half for the Explorers. Galloway, who leads 
leads the team in scoring and assists. Back out high to Mills. Galloway beat him on the baseline. Loriaga had to have it. Three point basket. Brings it to nine. Pace picking up here in Dayton. Working the way they're working tonight, Jim. It's beautiful to watch, and it's a nightmare to defend. Because another look for Trimming. I tell you what, a Loriaga and Trimming. Defensively, though, can they find ways to stop this lethal attack by the Explorers where they space you, penetrate, and then they've been spraying threes, and they've been getting good shots every trip. Haven't had many empty trips in the second half, that's, that's right. for sure. That's exactly right. 62% for the game. Now for LaSalle. Here it is. Ramon Galloway. Right down Broad Street in Philly. That away. <laughs> the first four and tomorrow the second round begins with the infinity ncaa tip-off show on true tv at 11 a.m 16 games across tbs cbs tnt and true tv tomorrow you decide the games to watch the viewer is in control it's a smogish smogish board of college that's the way we like it Here's Galloway on the floor with it to Peterson. Right able to pick it off the floor. Boy, when a team is operating as efficiently as LaSalle is, that's a big, big offensive rebound to give up. Watkins thought it was all ball. The officials say otherwise. That's the third on Watkins, so a pair coming up for right. In this half, LaSalle has been so efficient. You get them to miss a shot, and then you're just not able to come up with the rebound. That's a real bad break and blow for Boise State there. Right comes out of Dobbins Tech, third all-time score in school history. That's the school that produced both Kimball and Hank Gathers. But Kimball and uh, the assistant now at LaSalle. Horace Owens, and the only two ahead on that all-time school scoring list at the Dobbins Tech, just a couple of miles away from the LaSalle campus. Horace, a contemporary of mine, a terrific player in his own right. Back in the late 70s, early 80s. LaSalle fouls on number one, DJ Peterson, his third. Peterson whistled for his third, so back to the line. Drimmick from Endeavor. Hills, Victoria, Australia. And again, just a sophomore. It's a Boise State program that was 13 and 17 a year ago, but brought four starters back, and Coach Leon Rice certainly having the program headed in the right direction after all those years serving for the great Mark Pugh as his associate head coach there at Gonzaga. Opportunities to lead through the years, but the perfect opportunity he felt was to come along at Boise. You commit that they have and the great success to their athletic teams. He was always a Boise State football fan. Uh -huh. Rice. In fact, Coach Rice was not a college basketball player, he's a football player, actually. And a foul call here on Marks. Yeah, you make a great point as you look at Leon Rice. All this thought Derek Marks was in good position. But you talk about the right fit. Really important, not just for players, 
and they're choosing schools and styles of play, but coaches as well. And this seems to be a hand and glove fit for Leon Rice and Boise State. Get full coverage of the 2013 Division I Women's Basketball Tournament. NCAA.com slash women's final four. Galloway hits a pair to increase the lead back to double digits. It's 10 to 10 to play. Yeah, I just don't see Boise State being able to disrupt the comfort zone of LaSalle just with its offense. They're going to have to be able to create some stops, turnovers, and do so without fouling. Watch out now. Uh, what a spin now. My goodness. Tyrone Garland. He's special. He has been tonight. Just a junior. Started his career at Virginia Tech. That's off Galloway. Watch this. Agitator in the washing machine. Spin him around and drop him off. Tyrone Garland. Beautifully done. Here is Marks. He's hit only one shot from the field tonight. Inside, though. Buckner able to hit the short shot. Excellent pass by Derek Marks, who again told me this afternoon he enjoys doing that. Maybe more so than scoring. And the Broncos make some stops at this end. Down low to right. Back it in on Buckner. He traveled first. No basket. You can tell Wright was starting to feel it, too. I'm going to take a look. Screen's going to be set here. Dribble penetration. And then right to the rim. And nobody goes with Kenny Buckner. Three on the ball. Nobody on the guy who rolled. Trim it. High stepping around like that. He's not bothering him now. And Marsh got Mills on him. Marsh puts up the shot. And he's on the board in the second half. Maybe that'll get him going. Sometimes that's all it takes, Jim, for outstanding scores. Just one time. See it touch nylon. His first field goal since 12:43 was left in the Time first half. LaSalle. And LaSalle says, let's take a timeout. Boise's he's got it down to eight. And Marks just maybe needed one to get him going. Along with Clark Kellogg and Tracy Wolfson, Jim Nance back here in Dayton. The halftime lead was eight. It remains that with 8.15 to go in the game. How about this? Second half, Boise State shooting 53%. No turnovers and still down eight. That's because LaSalle has shot 71%. A very efficient offense both plays for Boise State to get all the way back. They're going to have to be able to cut into that field goal percentage of LaSalle. I like the timeout call by John Giannini to timeout kind of stem the rally of Boise State. Garland was pinned on that occasion, so he calls another timeout. But still, down eight as LaSalle's taking a couple of back-to-back -back timeouts. Curran has not gotten going offensively for LaSalle. His slack has been picked up by Garland. Garland with the three-point shot, and he drills it. Backbreaker. Wow. Look at this three-point shooting both ways, 9 and 16 between. Marks. Tough shot. Yeah, that's too long to put out for him. That's one of the things he does really well, is he can make tough challenge shots, Jim. That's not something a lot of players can do, but he can. Durant. 
Nice pass three Broncos feeds Mills, and Mills is having quite a night from the outside. His fifth three-pointer of the evening. This is some kind of display of shooting. There you see the numbers right there, 11 of 20. Sal on average, Jim, there's Marks again. He's starting to feel it. This is a player, Marks, who had 35 against Creighton. 28 of them coming in the second half, and that was on the road. Yep. Great Creighton team. It was some kind of show. I watched that game, Jim, and uh, it was a splendid performance. The highest uh, ranked opponent they ever beat in school history. Number 11 at the time, Creighton. Darwin this time gets the assist. Setting up right. Every time down the floor, it seems, the explorers find a way. Well, John Giannini says it best. You've got talented players that can make plays with the ball and are willing to share it. It's an easy game and fun to watch. A little tussle here. Mark's not wanting to give up any ground. Galloway wanting to assert himself. No harm. No trouble. You're watching the first four presented by Northwestern Mutual. After the marks miss, he got tangled up and had a little disagreement here with Galloway. Marks was called for the foul, and then during the break, they actually went over to review to make sure it wasn't a flagrant one foul, which it was not. That's right. You see there, Marks had the arm of Galloway. Jamie Lucky gonna just caution Galloway and let him know that all is good, but keep your lid on the emotions and keep the elbows down. So my, what a half of basketball we've seen. Actually, both ways, Jim, offensively, I mean, the effort that Boise State has put forth in terms of low turnovers and field goal percentage would be a winning effort against most teams. Except that they're playing the Explorers who are shooting at over 70% in the second half. Yep. 76% to be exact. They're shooting, in fact, better from three than they are from three. <laughs> Here's a steal away by the Broncos. One of the few turnovers either way this half. Yeah, Boise has not turned it over in the half. Not once. And it's going back this time to LaSalle off of Buckner. And here comes instant offense. Two teams coming out of conferences that got a whole lot of respect from the committee last Sunday. Yep. Five teams for both the A-10 and the Mountain West in the field of 68 to start. Galloway steps past the defender and backs it home. Deservedly so, Jim. There's no question about the quality of those two conferences and the teams that are representing those conferences in the tournament. I mean, you're looking at a LaSalle team. You talk to the coaches around the league. This team is highly respected and greatly feared because of, the, of its ability to do what we're seeing here tonight. And March continues to knock down jumpers, but it may not be enough because now LaSalle is going to really spread you out. They'll open the accordion wide open now and start playing dribble penetration, pitch and catch string music. Away, turns it over. And Marks, who's starting to simmer, whips it inside and it's stolen. Durant was there, read it just right. First turnover in 17 minutes by the Broncos. Durant whipped around pass. And that's off right. He just didn't squeeze that one. That was a nice play by Durant. Terrell Wright, who's had a huge half, just not able to catch that one. But time working against Boise State here. They're going to do something. It has to start now. Yep. They actually had some stops at the other end, forced some turnovers. Haven't taken advantage of it every time, though. And Drimmick. 
Oh, what a quick release three that was. Brings it back to nine. Boy, what a game Drummond's had. My goodness. He's more than a shooter. 28 points on highly efficient shooting. Still time, but not a lot. This is where you still got to attack if you're LaSalle. You don't want to put the parking brake on too hard. Garland drive it in and banks it home. He doesn't miss tonight, it seems. He's only missed one, I think, Tim. Nine out of ten from the field. Right you are. This is what we call in the gym range. Anthony Drimmick. Right now. Splash. Every Monday, the good old boys are at it again. All new episodes of Lizard Lick Towing. Every Monday at 10 p.m. Well, between turnovers, talking about LaSalle and the offensive end of the floor, they've turned it over now several times. Between the turnovers and some free throw attempts, as far as made field goals, they haven't missed in seven and a half minutes from the field. It's been a flawless offensive performance by LaSalle. And a pretty good one in this second half by the Broncos. Yeah. Here's Thompson at the line. Mikey Thompson, redshirted last year. Been kind of their sixth man most of the season. Winning the state title at Canyon Springs High School in Las Vegas. Tremendous upside for this young man. Talk to also the coaching staff. Boise State led for a total of 37 seconds tonight. Got it down to five at one time in the second half. That'll be inbounded by LaSalle after the kickball. They're still managing to stay within striking distance are the Broncos. Seems like this second half has been played in that 8 to 14 point LaSalle lead most of the way. Yeah, it has been, Joe. There's Garland. Oh, it has to be a second miss. A good shot here. Marks. Timmick. Diving back to Thompson. Comes up short. Buckner keeping it alive. Loriaga. Oh, they needed his three. Good effort by Kenny Buckner, though. His work on the offensive glass there drew a foul. And will retain possession. Actually, it'll be a one and one now. As LaSalle in the penalty. Good activity by Buckner. Good look for Loriaga. And then there's Buckner getting pushed. I think they got right for the foul. Second on right. So one and one. And that's a big one. With a senior who did not play hoops in high school back in Washington, D.C. Got spotted playing in some rec ball and got a chance to play. Actually went off to play some junior college baseball. And pretty amazing story. Going to graduate, as I mentioned, in the first half come May. The only senior for the Broncos. Cut at the seven. Half the round and picked up by Wright. Two and a half remaining. Ball somehow gets over to Mills and back out high to Galloway. Look at the spacing here, Jim. Boys of State trying to scramble and double team the ball. The Mills. Uh -huh. Keep it in the middle of the floor if you miss out. That's a danger zone. Well, Jimmick almost had the steal. And that's a foul of Wright. Yeah, you're right, Jim. Just missed that steal. They had the ball where they wanted it defensively on the sideline, where you could use that sideline as an additional defender. The South fortunate there to get something positive at the basket. Two shots coming for Wright. Fourth foul, by the way, on Marks. Coming up next on True TV, it is Inside March Madness presented by Buick. Our man Matt Weiner will be guiding us through it. Seth Davis, Steve Smith, 
Rex Chapman breakdown tonight's doubleheader. Look into the 16-game Ford Network schedule for tomorrow. And right, missed them both. Door is cracked. LaSalle only three out of eight from the free throw line, even though it's shooting over 70% in the second half. And there's a shot that drops by Marks. Timeout, Boise State. And Boise State calls timeout, trimming it to six. With 1.51 to go, don't count them out yet. Well, Derek Marks starting to simmer in the late stages. Got away with a push off. He sure did. Sure did get away with a little nudge there. But Boise calls the immediate timeout. Well, the South going to have to handle the ball, which they've done quite well most of the game, and make some free throws. Each team has two timeouts to go. The 150 on the clock. No reason to foul here for Boise State. Just try to play solid defense and come up with a stop. With the floor is spaced the way it is with the sound, you got to be ready to rebound if a shot is taken and missed. A lot tougher when you're scrambling. Jimmick on Galloway. Back out to Garland with 10 on the shot clock. They've worked it down pretty good. Will they produce on this trip? Duran, no. And it's going Again. against Peterson. Sure is. That's a one and one opportunity. The Broncos could get. As close as they've been in a long time, partner. Good drive here by Duran. This is a shot that he can make. And there's the little nudge. It doesn't take much. You get your hand in the small of the back of a player leaping for a rebound. You can gain an advantage without much contact. Good call. So Buckner, two out of four tonight at the line as Galloway will get a break. I'm sure it'll be brief. 118 to go. One and one. Right is there for the rebound. Big miss right there by Buckner. He almost got to think about fouling here, exactly. Drimmick reaches in on Garland. Yep, 80 seconds, 70 seconds to go. Down six. You've got to get some cooperation from LaSalle at the foul line if you're Leon Rice and Boise State. Garland will be shooting a one and one Explorers trying to make this an extra special day for the school that's celebrating a huge anniversary. One and one the school was actually chartered 150 years ago today. There you see Dremick trying to get the foul immediately. They wanted to foul right. They lost probably about four or five seconds there. Right, not nearly the free throw shooter that Garland is. Garland at 74%. Makes them both. Right only at 62. Move point now. Gotta go quick. Drimmick. Gonna try to drive it though, see if he can draw a foul. Drimmick again. Follows his shot. Now drives in, splits defenders. Tapped up, yes. That was Marks who tapped it in. Timeout again, called by Leon Rice and Boise State, leaving him with one. I think this is the move from the start. Drive it to the rim. Still a chance for Boise State. And down the stretch we come, folks. Plus six for LaSalle. And as I expected, Jim, during the break, John Giannini, knowing and expecting Boise State to foul, has taken Jarrell right out, who's a 62% free throw shooter. The rest of these guys on the floor collectively are about 80%. When you aggregate all five of the players on the floor for the South. It's Peterson. Heaves it down the floor. Galloway has it. Out battling Marks on the pass. And hits the field goal. Big time play by Galloway. And that will send Thompson to the line with 35 seconds. 
which was a dangerous pass. Yeah, it was a dangerous was a pass. High point. risk, high reward. They got the reward here because they were fighting only about four seconds to get it over the timeline. And Galloway just beat Marks to the ball, just like Mikey the football Thompson receiver, judging it accurately and coming down with it. Still just a one and one. The next one will be a double bonus, 70% shooter on the season. I guess it is a bigger part of the act of shooting. So Thompson with one more. Seventy-eight, seventy-one, and they're going to be sending now Durant to the line. Nice second half for Derek Marks. He is DQ'd, and it looks like the sophomore season will come to a close. But acquitted himself nicely in the second half after a. Bumpy first half, and you can see the disappointment on his face and in his body bag. 12 of his 14, Clark, coming in the second half. Thomas Broplay will come onto the floor for him. And Dr. John Giannini and his LaSalle Explorers, 33 seconds away from a first NCAA tournament win for the program since 1990. Tyree Jordan, I'll tell you what, you look ahead, Kansas State has had an outstanding year, Jim, under Bruce Weber in his first year in Manhattan. I don't know if we'll see, you can see the disappointment there on Derek Marks' face. I'll tell you what, you take a look at the way the Explorers play basketball tonight. And they'll be up late trying to figure out a game plan to neutralize these guards from LaSalle. Won't be much turnaround time for LaSalle. They're 20 seconds away from closing this out and heading to the airport. They're going to fly to Kansas City tonight. And that will do it. Charter Day, it's called at LaSalle. 150-year anniversary of the school. 59-year to the day anniversary of its national championship. And now a first NCAA tournament win in 23 years. A lot of good karma on this day. Big time good karma and a splendid performance by those young men wearing the blue and gold. Best of the season, 63% for the Explorers who have the 80 to 71 victory. We'll hear from them when we come back. Welcome back to Dayton. I'm with the winners. Let's start with you, head coach John Giannini, and just explain from start to finish the impressive performance of your team today. Well, Jarrell Wright really helped us inside. He's a wonderful player, but it was our guards against theirs, and those guys are terrific. I mean, three and two hit some unbelievable shots, but our guards had the upper hand, and, uh, uh, and they made plays, they defended, uh, they shared the ball. Uh, our guys are really hard to, to guard. Uh, we have good guards. That was evident tonight. One of those guards that was hard to defend is this guy right here, Tyrone Garland. And you had some really kind words for him just before. Can you share that with us? I recruited Ty really, really hard out of high school. And I told him, you know, this is why I chased you all over the place, to win NCAA tournament games and see you be a great player. And I, I knew he could do it. Ty, how about for you just to get this win for this program and to put them back on the winning track? First NCAA tournament win since 1990. It's an unbelievable feeling, man. When I came here, coach just told me I could help them win games and get them to the next step, man. You can't even do that without the confidence in your coach and your teammates. So I'm just happy we got the win, especially for the university. And how about, how about that? 150th anniversary of LaSalle, anniversary of our national championship game. So uh, St. John Baptist uh, De La Salle is uh, looking out for us. You took the words right out of my mouth. Congratulations. Go in. 
I'm hot, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Garland, a Philly kid, leads him tonight with 22, and they'll head now to Kansas City Charter Day. It'll be a charter night. We'll be flying into Kansas City in a short turnaround, playing on Friday at 3:10 Eastern Time against Kansas State. Boy, there's a celebration, no doubt, going on in Philadelphia right now, and I can't help but think of uh, Dr. John Janini's mentor who gave him his start in the coaching Lou Henson has to be loving this well they're rocking and rolling in the 215 you can count on yeah, that 215 living large after that win tonight LaSalle over Boise State for Clark Kellogg and Tracy Wilson Jim Nance saying so long from Dayton stay tuned for inside March Madness presented by Buick after these messages